So we talked about taking in glucose, using it to make ATP, but what if we wanna release glucose? What if we haven't eaten in a while and we wanna release some glucose into our bloodstream? Well, we can do that in two ways. I'll tell you the first way now. That is through, that is through gluconeogenesis. And gluconeogenesis is basically the reverse of glycolysis. So right here we have our nice glycolysis backbone, which we will see a lot. And I hope you memorized these very important enzymes, hexokinase, PFK1, pyruvate kinase. Not only are these important enzymes, but they're irreversible. So if we want to do gluconeogenesis and we want to go in reverse, we're going to have to find a way to bypass these roadblocks. And gluconeogenesis does something very clever. It starts with pyruvate and it jumps down to oxaloacetate via pyruvate carboxylase. Now what do carboxylases do? Hopefully you remember that from our terminology, it moves carboxyl groups around. But it needs a friend. Do you remember that friend? It needs biotin. So it jumps down here and it catapults up to PEP via PEP carboxy kinase with the help of GTP. So it made it past the first roadblock. Now it can move in reverse. So it's moving on up, moving on up, moving on up. Uh-oh, it's hit another roadblock. PFK1. Well, as a buddy that can bypass this, it's called fructobisphosphate phosphonate ACE, one and two, and that allows it to move to fructose 6-phosphate. Now it's making its way up, and it gets to the last roadblock, the last irreversible step. It's stuck at glucose 6-phosphate, and it needs to take that phosphate group off. Remember, phosphate traps it in there. It needs to take it off, and it does that with the help of an enzyme called Glucose 6, do you remember the enzyme that takes phosphase off? Phosphatase. Takes that phosphate group off, now you have free glucose. Glucose goes into the bloodstream and that is gluconeogenesis. Understand? Now, there's one big problem that can arise in patients in gluconeogenesis and that is if they're deficient in glucose 6 phosphate. Glucose 6 phosphate, sorry, glucose 6 phosphatase. If they're deficient in glucose 6 phosphatase, they can't take that phosphate group off. They can't release glucose. Now this enzyme is found in your liver, but it's not found in your muscles. If you're deficient in it, we call that von Grecker. Gre <laughs> von Gehrke's disease. Very famous. Usually shows up at birth. They'll have a weak baby that's crying all the time. They don't know what's wrong. It's because they can't release glucose in their bloodstream. They're constantly hypoglycemic. Not only that, you get trapped in this cycle and you start shunting products in different places. You start shunting into fat synthesis and you start shunting into DNA synthesis and causing lactic acid and stuff like that. So you get increased fat synthesis. So the baby will have increased cholesterol, triglycerides, shunting into uh, lactic acid. You have gout. Probably the most common sign you'll see besides the hypoglycemia is that because you can't get the glucose out of your liver, you can have hepatomegaly. Try and treat this by making sure the baby feeds so that they're not fasting, they don't need to go through this pathway, their blood always has sugar. So treat with glucose. 
That's gluconeogenesis. The second way we can put glucose in our blood is by breaking down our stores, breaking down our glycogen. Now before we talk about breaking glycogen down, let's talk about making it in the first place. So if you have excess sugar, your body will know that and it'll move this phosphate group on glucose 6-phosphate to the 1 position, making it glucose 1-phosphate. And that signals it to go into making glycogen. This turns into UDP glucose. And finally, chaining UDP gly glucose together gives you glycogen. A lot of people think glycogen is just chains of glucose. It's not. It's chains of UDP glucose. So this is how you chain UDP glucose. You can chain them side to side. And these are via alpha 1, 4 chains. Or you can branch them via 1, 6 chains. That is how you create glycogen. Now let's talk about how you break down glycogen. So, glycogen looks like this. You have your 1,6 linkage, 1,4 linkages. So we need to break all that down and make our glucose. Some of it goes to lysosomes, which have the enzyme alpha 1,4 gluco Sidase. And that does the job for us, nice and easy, breaks down glucose. However, most of our glycogen doesn't get that star treatment. So, we have to break it down ourselves. We go through a system of enzymes that starts chopping away at it. The first one is glycogen phosphorylase. And what that does is, is it chops off these until only a few remain. And the few that remain we call limited dextrins. Now it looks like this. Next it gets worked on by an enzyme called the branching enzyme. And this is quite a doozy of an enzyme. It actually has two functions. The first uses 4 alpha D glucanotransferase to move this limited dextrin to the end. So it should kind of look like this now. And then finally, the second function of the debranching enzyme is your alpha 1, 6, 6, 1, 6 glucosidase. And that just cuts off that last 1, 6 linkage. And now you have it. Nice glucose 6 phosphate. And you know the fun or you know the fate of glucose 6 phosphate. G6P. Glucose 6 phosphatase takes that phosphate group off, untraps it, becomes glucose, and leaves. So glucose 6-phosphatase releases that free glucose. That's how you go from glycogen to glucose, breaking it down. Now what can go wrong? Well, any enzyme we talked about, any enzyme that can go wrong, will go wrong. We can just start, I mean, we talked about glucose 6-phosphatase already, that's von Gerke's. We won't talk about that again. This enzyme can go wrong, glycogen phosphorylase can go wrong, alpha 1,6 glucosidase can go wrong. All of these can go wrong, and when they go wrong, you can't break down glycogen. We call those glycogen storage diseases. And something they all share in common is that if you do a liver biopsy, you're going to see that glycogen. And a stain that stains glycogen is PASS, so it will be PASS positive. So all glycogen storage diseases are PASS positive. So let's just go down the list. If you're deficient in alpha-1,4 glucosidase, that is called Pompe's 
disease, or just Pompeii's. Pompeii affects the heart mostly. And so you're going to have cardiomegaly. You're going to have hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. Easiest way to remember it is Pompeii sounds like pump. The heart's a pump. And this is the enzyme that's deficient. Next on the list, glycogen phosphorylase. This is McArdle's disease. This, you're going to have a lack of glycogen breakdown and glucose to power your muscles. So people that have this, they have really low mus muscular endurance. They can't really run very far or they'll start having cramps. They might have arrhythmias. They might have myoglobinuria where their muscle breaks down and you actually pee it out. They have really dark urine. They might ask what drug is absolutely contraindicated in these patients and that would be your statins. Do you remember why? Recall statins cause rhabdomyolysis. We talked about that in the ETC cycle. So no statins for McArdle's disease. That's a deficiency in your glycogen phosphorylase. Lastly, Corey's disease, deficiency in alpha 1,6 glucosidase. This, remember, breaks that last bit off. So you get a buildup of limited dextrins, usually pretty mild. That does it. Those are your glycogen storage diseases. Know the steps from glycogen to glucose, and then from that, just go down the list of what can go wrong. Pompeys, McArdles, Corys. Just know a few facts, and you should be good to go. That does it for this video. See you next time.